Hi, this is Jake Terrio, and you are listening to Waveform by Subpixel. If you own a smartphone or tablet, chances are you've played a mobile game at some point in your life. But just where do these games come from? Who makes them? And why? Well, those are questions we're going to answer here today on this episode of Waveform. Well, so I guess first things first, thank you for uh, agreeing to sit down and chat with me. I'm sorry it took us a literal year and a day to figure it out. That's fine. I was late anyway, so that's fair. So the first icebreaker I've got is what are you playing right now? I've just finished playing Donut County, which I think a lot of people have been playing. Oh, me too. Yeah, yeah. It's so cool. It, um, yeah, just beautiful little design and music i've been following that since like way before well before i even started getting into game uh game design so it's cool it's out <laughs> yeah that i think i can't remember how long i was following the development on that one either but yeah i was very excited when that one came out yeah yeah super cool so that's neat um so now what games are you looking forward to i want to play sticky cat it just looks like more ridiculous local multiplayer fun and then uh what the golf as well if you've seen that Oh, yes, I have seen. I have seen What the Golf. Just I love the way that kind of sets up your expectations in one way and then just flips it over with mm. uh, the dude's back at the golf ball and he hits himself instead and things like that. Yeah. We seem to be in something of a golf game renaissance right now. Yeah. I don't know if that's... Uh, I just I feel like I've seen a lot of golf games within the past two or three years and they've all been like... None of them are straight up golf games, but it's all like variations on a golf theme. Yeah, but. yeah. I guess that's yeah. what you can do with it. We're all a bit tired of normal McCall games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, neat. Um, if we could get into the meat of what this interview will be, um, starting just with, I guess, a, a brief little synopsis of, of your own history in game development. I started working at Roll7 on Not a Hero uh, in mm-hmm. 2014, and that was great. And then I followed that with some pre-production on Laser League, which came out lately. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But obviously, I couldn't talk about that for a long time. Now it's out, so I can talk about it. And then I, I left Roll7 towards the end of pre-production on that to go into front-end development instead and um, spent, like, six months doing, like, websites and things for various big companies. And um, mm. cause, just because I was testing out the idea of, uh, do I actually want to be in games? And within, like, two months, I was like, this sucks. Yeah, I want to be in games. Right. Um, and so I started... Uh, working on ideas in my spare time, came up with Space Plan as a little sort of just exercise, and then mm-hmm. that blew up and got me an offer from Devolver to make the full version of it. So I went and made that. That came yeah. last year, and now I'm faffing about with new prototypes. Yeah, so Space Plan is this this nice, you know, it is very unique. How long was that project in development? Because I know there was a Space Plan prototype on the web before, like, the main version came out. Well, the web prototype was in development. I think it was took me three months to make. It was just made as a, like, let's see if we can bang out a project in three months. Then once that's mm-hmm. out, I'll do another project in three months and just keep banging them out to build a following. But yeah, the first one took off more than I expected. And then uh, after release, went into like pitching for the full version, which was over mm. a couple months. And then the full version space plan took about six or seven months, I think. So it was all very like, I just kind of want to get things finished, projects out there to start. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Career. Yeah. So what was the, you said you were, you were kind of, coming up with these ideas for games while you were doing more of this web design and development type stuff. So what was the inspiration behind Space Plan? It was just like, uh, for a long time, I've been messing about trying to learn how to code and things. And I always start by just coding gravity. Uh, Mm -hmm. um, And then like uh, trajectory prediction of objects. And through doing this, I just ended up sitting around for ages watching like a planet with a couple of satellites floating around it and i mm. it's like really nice to just chill out and watch this happening right and so i just kind of went like with that and was sort of like you can make a game with that as you know as long as there's like enough gameplay to keep you staring at that cool little thing on the screen then i thought mm. and then on top of that for like the narrative it was um stephen hawking's brief history of time that book like i i didn't know a lot about 
the concepts in that and learning it just kind of has been stuck in my head since I read it. So yeah. it keeps yeah. dripping into whatever yeah. I'm working on. I wanted to ask, I, I didn't put this question in here, but I did want to ask about the narrative. It did seem that it was also maybe partially Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy inspired, I guess more so just in the humor of it, because it is, there is a lot of humor in the kind of narrative. Yeah, I, I hadn't actually read that until a couple months ago, actually. Oh, really? <laughs> Which is pretty funny. A lot of people say that it reminds them of Hitchhikers, but um, yeah, I guess that's a lot like just in the kind of absurdist humor of it, right? Well, because that then dovetails into the next formal question that I had in the whole, the the idea of potatoes. And potatoes have become something of like the sci-fi trope in maybe the past 10 years of sci-fi filmmaking was there a deliberate decision to include that motif or was it just kind of like oh potatoes that would be funny it, it was yeah the, the the latter i just thought what generates power and and it was because i was um i was basing a lot of the original the space plan pro- prototypes because i was just trying to learn how an idle game is made i was basing a lot of the model around cookie clicker and mm-hmm. in Cookie Clicker, you start by buying the cursor, and then you buy a grandma. And I thought, I, I figured that's like a comedic hook, right? Yeah. At the start to kind of get you on there. So I was like, okay, you start with solar panels, and then you get potatoes. Now it's just meant to be the comedic hook, and then back to like serious sci-fi stuff. But right. I went with potato, and then I thought probe potato is actually kind of funny, so I'll just do that. And then uh, I wanted to do a, spat- a satellite, and I thought Sputnik, Sputnik. And at that point, there were too many potatoes for it to not be a cool right. part of the game. So, yeah, it was, it was sort of just an accident. But since since release, yeah, loads of people have pointed out how sci-fi potatoes turn out to be. And I'm always right. seeing people like, messaging me saying, like, oh, it must be Space Planet in the news because Space and Potatoes and this thing and things like that. It is very humorous. There is a a unique intelligence about it. I liked that there is the scientific mode that just switches everything from watts to joules, and that's oh, the only yeah. the only change. Accurate mode. Yeah, I've I've got uh, a lot of emails from people telling me that I'm wrong about how power works. <laughs> I got I, I got an email from a NASA engineer about it as well, which is oh really? One, yeah. And he, he was very kind about it. I like I explained the design decisions about like making it accessible. And um, and he was like, yeah, okay, fair. This makes sense, actually. <laughs> that must have been. I can't. I can't imagine if somebody at NASA, you know, wrote to me about one of my short films I made in college. And was like, <laughs> you did this all wrong. Yeah. But so, how was it similar or different working on Space Plan to working with that team at Roll Seven on those other titles? Uh, yeah, obviously it was super different, just because uh, on on Roll Seven, I obviously mostly just had to worry about the art. Although I did like promotional assets and things as well i wasn't too involved on a lot of the actual direction on that so it was just kind of this asset needs to fit these functions Mm -hmm. and i just kind of you know solve that problem and create something that works for that it was with space plan um yeah it was all of it except music obviously by logan and um marketing thanks to devolver and that but um Mm -hmm. Yeah, very different, especially the business side. I hate having to do any kind of business stuff, but right. I also don't trust anyone else with it. So uh, that that's, I think every developer says this, but it, that always turns out to be much more than you ever think it's going to be. It is funny you bring that up because all of the indie developers I've talked to, at some point they've been like, yes, the business side of things, terrible, hate it. Yeah. Would love to do anything but that. <laughs> but and that's where I guess publishers come in to an extent at least because they take a lot yeah. of your shoulders. But yeah. yeah, so it's been a little more, because I think it was May of 2017 that Space Plan came out. Yeah, May 4th. Was, yeah, was May fourth be with you. Oh yes, no, because <laughs> yeah, it was that, and then I was on set for a week, and I played through Space Plan like twice. Oh sweet! Um, in that week, but um, so what's been kind of the biggest takeaway from you know you you know you made a game and now it's been out in the wild and how's that been? Uh, well, obviously, there's all the huge takeaways of like putting out your first game from start to finish because you learn a lot from that. Other than that, I've I've just been very interested to learn more about how idle games work because that's something I really want to focus on still. Mm-hmm. Um, 
just kind of realizing that like with, with space plan a core principle was that it would have an ending i do realize now that it would be good to like have an ending but then have something afterwards that's optional so it's mm-hmm. a healthy game has an ending uh but then those people who really do just want more can have it uh, i didn't realize the importance of that before i made it yeah yeah and re- replayability that's the main thing i've learned i guess yeah yeah I need more of that there was one person tried to complete the game. He he emailed me saying he was going to try and play the game for just getting one of each item, and he would get back to me with how long it took. And he, I, I never heard from him again. So, <laughs> so he's still going. I I can only assume that. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got one game out in the wild, and I know that you've got something cooking right now, which I don't know if you can talk too much about it, other than that you have put on Twitter. Just the single bullet point of space manatees. Yeah. Uh, Is there anything you can tell us about that? Well, hopefully it's going to contain space manatees. Perfect. But no, it's, it's a space exploration idol game, basically. Sort of in the style of space plan, like sort of building on that, but in no other way connected to space plan. Uh, mm. I should clarify now before it becomes another potato thing. It's not a game about space manatee. <laughs> I just want it to have a space manatee in it. Yeah, you heard it here first. <laughs> trying to trying to work out the best way to do an idle game uh, in keeping it healthy, um, non addictive. Because I don't like in Space Plan how you got to tap constantly. It's like right. It, it encourages you to sit there and just tap. Whereas I want an idle game to be one where you pick it up, you interact with it for a little bit, and that's like quality time spent you know and then you can put it down knowing that it's making decent progress without you but also that you're not missing out any on anything by not playing it right um so i'm just kind of aiming to hit that sweet spot of what i think an idle game should be because i think there's a lot of potential for the genre and it's mostly being exploited for like addictive microtransaction games you know Mm -hmm. yeah because that was what was so um what was refreshing about space plan is even with the clicking and finding myself just like sitting and clicking for a while is that it it wasn't endless and there was that that narrative ending to it where we got to see bunny lord and a bunch of other (laughs) kind of cosmic elements and so i did definitely appreciate that so it's interesting this question is not on the list but i think i might want to wrap up with it because we've kind of touched on a little bit this idea of idle games and the room for growth that there is in that genre. Yeah. I think you've already talked about what you want to do with them, but yeah, we'll just, we'll wrap up with that, I guess is what is your philosophy on idle games? Yeah, I, I guess it is more or less what I'd said. Um, that they should be, I think that they have a potential to be very healthy games, um, for adults who, you know, have way too much shit to do and don't have enough time to sit down and spend six hours loading a game and things like that, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I think they, yeah, there's enormous potential for them to just be a chill out thing that you open up, play for a couple of minutes, put it aside and you don't have this like guilt or anxiety over you of like, I need to play the game to make progress because you know, it's progressing without you. Yeah. Just kind of, kind of healthy, uh, doesn't put any pressure on you to play it and can be played whenever you like, I guess more or less the principles on it. I need to sit down and come up with a little manifesto on it, I guess. The the J. Collins mission statement. (laughs) Then I think that will about conclude uh, this broadcast. I'm always excited to be able to get to talk to developers of things that I've played. It's always neat to get those little behind-the-scenes insights. So thank you for that. No, no problem. It's great. 